welcome all of you so this is part of this new course i have started this is the bio of me and this is the book i have written for general aptitude this is a blueprint of aptitude and this is how how i will be uh, going with this course also yesterday we started the uh, what we can say syllabus and all i explained and these topics will be discussed in each of the chapters so numbers i will be discussing in three chapters probability and arrangement is in three chapters series formation three chapter geometry two chapters like that all these topics will be covered in detail with discussion of discussion of theory previous year questions and practice questions so first of all general aptitude questions we can divide into two quantitative aptitude problem and logical reasoning problem quantitative aptitude as i told yesterday quantitative aptitude problem means mathematics and logic both will be involved logical reasoning means purely logical scenarios where there is no maths at all in aptitude section or part a section of csir net exam you should have an objective approach that is a first tip i want to tell you to all of you objective approach means what because in your msc exams or bsc exams and in all the uh, what we can say till msc all the exams you were following a descriptive question paper where you have to read a question understand the question and find the an answer of the question but when you are going to a competitive exam field you have to uh, be you you should have an objective approach that means how well you are using answer options is very important so when you see a question generally you can have three steps we can say one is read the question and the options given then choose the least time consuming method that is very important that is one thing that many people miss they don't choose any method they just do the method they know they only have one method with them they just do with that method only choosing the least time consuming method is very important and then solving the question then only solve the question read the question and the options that is very important because options only will give you idea about what is the least time consuming method reading the question and the options given is very important then choose the least time consuming method then solve the question and when you think about different methods what i will suggest is think about selecting answers and rejecting answers both of them are very important some of the question you just have to select the right answer some of the questions you have to not select the right answer you have to reject the wrong answer whatever remains will be the right answer you have to reject the three wrong answers that means you are not actually finding the correct answer at all you are only finding the three wrong answers whatever remains will be the right answer and what is least time consuming method let me tell about that what is least time consuming method there are many methods in which you can do the problem for example mathematical direct method logical direct method visual method backward induction method taking example iteration technique scale it and measure it elimination by substitution elimination by analyzing option elimination with related options like that all these methods in detail we are going to discuss in the upcoming classes in my new full course now the second tip i want to tell you is the time factor how time is important in csir net part a section first of all for any question in part a section maximum 2 minutes if you are taking more than 2 minutes means that should be a question that you should skip you should not try that question you should skip that question instead of trying that question as i told 2 minutes maximum is a rule that you should keep in part a section not more than that maximum 2 minutes only you should spend for a question maximum 2 minutes for a question means yesterday i told you 15 questions in part a maximum you can try 15 questions maximum 2 minutes each means total 30 minutes so maximum time you should spend for part a section should be 30 minutes not more than that it can be less than that for example if you are planning to do only 10 questions it can be taken 20 minutes only if you are doing 12 questions 24 minutes is easy, uh, enough but 2 minutes for a question is a rule you should follow thirdly you should assign time for part a part b part c because in net exam as you know there are three parts a b and c only if you assign time you will be able to manage time i will tell you why i am saying so many people the mistake they do is they try part b and part c section and then come back to part a in the end but the problem is at the end they are not getting time after part b and part c they are not getting time their whole 3 hours are over 
or two hour 50 minutes are over last five minutes or 10 minutes only are there in a panic they will do some questions and chances of making mistakes are more that should not happen before the exam itself you should have a clear cut plan how much time you will give for part A, how much for part B or how much for part C. Or at least when you see the question paper, you should have such a plan. Now in the online mode of examination, seeing the question paper fully is a challenging thing. In previous um, paper mode, that is offline mode, you were able to see the whole question paper. You could have understood whether the question paper subject part is easier or not. But now in the online mode, seeing the whole question paper is challenging. That is why what I will say is, before the exam itself, make a clear cut plan. How much time you will give for part A? How much time you will give for part B? How much time for you will give for part C? Not only that, you should assign what time you will give for part A. That means whether it is in the beginning or in the middle or in the end. Many people ask me what is my suggestion, whether part A should be done in the beginning or in the end or in the middle. What I will suggest is, part A should be done at a time when your brain is very fresh. For example, if you are assigning the last 15 minutes to 20 minutes in part A, many people the problem is, at that time their brain is saturated because they have worked a lot for doing each of the questions in their subject part and after that thinking about a logical section or part A is a logical section than mathematical, I told you in the last class also. So, thinking about a logical section towards the end of the end of the exam, that is a challenging thing. So, in my opinion, part A should be done at a time when your brain can think properly or a good presence of mind is there. Normally, for majority of the people, that will be in the beginning of the exam. But if you have the good presence of mind towards the end of the exam, then no problem, you can do it in the end of the exam also. What I will suggest is, do mock test, complete mock test before the exams, so that you will get a proper idea, what time part A should be done, what time part A should be, part B should be done, what time part C should be done. That is what I can say in um, general. Now, the third tip I want to tell you is, Choosing the right method, these all are interconnected. Time factor is connected with right method and they both are connected with the procedure I told, reading the question, understanding the right method, then solving the answer. So choosing the right method, as I told, there are many methods of doing part A section. The importance of right method is, you can do it in different methods. Maybe one same question can be done in four different methods. But in four different methods, the time you are taking will be different. So what is the right method means? The least time consuming method. The method which takes the least time, that is called the right method. In a competitive exam, in a time constrained competitive exam, that is the best method. So always remember choosing the right method. Again, what all are the methods? That is another topic. We will take another lecture. Most probably tomorrow and day after tomorrow in my course, we will be discussing these topics. If we are finishing this topic today, we will be discussing that methods to do part A section in the next class. So anyway, I will just show you these are the uh, summary of all the methods, different methods by which you can do part A section. These are the flashcards that you will be getting. The students who are joining my course, this flashcard printed material also will be sent to your address. There are total 50 flashcards. So all the 50 flashcards will be sent to you. So I will just show you an example. This is a June 2014 net exam problem. So all of you try this question. So I will start the explanation. So this question can be done with mathematical method or logical method also. I will explain both. Mathematically, in school days, when you are seeing this question, you are planning or most of the time you will be doing by a procedure, A into B equal to 24. So, you will do A equal to or B is equal to A by 24. And that A by 24, you will set, substitute here and then sub substitute here. You will get a value for A, you will get a value for D. You will multiply that. That is a normal procedure we follow. But that is too much time consuming. For a competitive exam perspective, that is time consuming method. So in my opinion, don't follow that. The fastest method is taking example method. Take examples to derive or verify the answer. What does that mean? Here, A into B equal to 24. Take a set of example for A and B, which satisfies that. A into B equal to 24, what are the set of example you want? 
many set of example is possible 8 into 3 6 into 4 12 into 2 24 into 1 whichever set you take no problem at all because this is a system of equation it will give the same answer itself so i will take the example 6 into 4 because that is easier to do that is only reason 6 into 4 is 24 that means we are assuming a is 6 b is 4 if a is 6 b is 4 means we are getting b is 4 now substitute that here example substitute there not the expression 4 into something is 32 4 into what is 32 4 into 8 is 32 so 8 we can substitute here 8 into something is 48 8 into what is 48 8 into 6 is 48 that means if you started with a equal to 6 you started with a equal to 6 you are getting d equal to 6 now the question is what is a into d 6 into 6 means 6 square or 36 which is a perfect square look at the four options from the answer option we are understanding that question is not demanding us to find the exact value question is only asking us to find the property of those number the property of the number is perfect square that can be easily derived by taking the example i hope all of you understood this if there is any particular doubt you can keep it to the end of the class so if so let's go to the next tip and trick choose the right question this is another thing when you practice part a section when you do part a section at the time of exam also this is one thing you should remember choosing the right question so what was the previous step choosing the right method but that is not enough choosing the right question is also needed as i told in the introductory class in 20 questions you are supposed to write maximum 15 questions you cannot do more than that but you can do less than that it is your freedom whether you want to do 10 questions or 12 questions or 5 questions or how many so definitely 15 questions even if you want to do 15 questions that's okay if your level of logic and level of practice is good you can do 15 questions in part a easily but my perspective is first search for the easy questions in every question paper from december 2012 when csar introduced the new system of aptitude from then till the last exam if you analyze all the previous year question papers you can see that in every question paper minimum seven to eight very simple questions will be there what i am meaning by simple is the questions which can be done in very less time so that EC questions will be there in every question paper. So your first target should be to find those EC questions. Find those very easy questions which can be done in one minute or one and a half minutes also. That means this seven to eight questions will not even take 10 to 12 minutes. That means by 10 to 12 minutes you are getting about 16 marks because two marks for a question as you know, eight question it will give you 16 marks. 16 marks in less than 16 minutes you can get. First, if you target for the EC questions, then after finding the EC question, you can go for the medium level questions, which if you analyze the previous question paper, five to six minimum questions will be there, medium level questions. Medium level questions means if your practice is good, those questions are not that difficult at all. Those questions can be easily done in two minutes. So EC and medium level questions itself will make up to 12 to 13 questions. Now avoiding difficult questions is also very important difficult in the sense there are some questions even if you practice well it will take more than two minutes to do that is the only reason i am not saying difficult means impossible questions no there are no impossible questions all the questions are possible to find the solution but some questions are very difficult to find the solution in two minutes i told you about the time factor two minutes maximum for a question in two minutes to find the solution for those difficult questions is little challenging that is the difficult questions you have to skip for some people whose logic is very high whose practice is so high even difficult questions can be done in less than two minutes but in general i will say 12 to 13 easy and medium level questions you can first target 12 to 13 questions it will take maximum 25 to 26 minutes in 25 minutes you are getting 12 to 13 questions means that's a huge relief for your subject part because the problem is if you depend upon subject part only to clear the exam it is very tough because out of 170 marks is your subject part from 170 mark getting a jrf cutoff of 100 110 sometimes 120 for some subjects is not that easy but if you get some marks from aptitude section, that is very easy. Some marks is not the important thing. Some marks in less time, time factor I told you. 
in less time if you are getting very good number of questions that is very important i always tell to my students getting 30 out of 30 is not the important thing in aptitude section getting maximum mark in minimum time that is important in aptitude section for example if you are getting only 25 marks that in 25 minutes that is wonderful that is better than getting 30 marks in 45 minutes or one hour because 2 minutes for a question and 30 minutes maximum for part A section, that should be a rule that should be kept in your mind. Because otherwise always think, if you are getting taking more than 30 minutes means you are taking time from your subject part, that is not advisable. 30 minutes for part A, remaining for your subject part. So that is about choosing the right question. I always tell to my students, CSAR net part A section is like a, a cricket match, where a good cricket batsman know how to judge the right ball. He know which is a good ball to play, which is a bad ball to play, which is a bouncer to skip. Just like that, by practice, you should gain the confidence or gain that level of understanding to understand which question is easy, which question is difficult. Again, I will train you regarding that in detail in the upcoming lecture, so don't worry. There are some topics where you can get very simple question. For example, series formation. Series formation is a topic where you can get very simple questions. There will be three pictures. Find the next picture. Every chapter simple questions comes. But from some chapters, more simple questions comes. Distance and direction. If your distance and direction idea is good, simple questions can come. Average, I will not say simple questions come always. Then clock problem, if it comes, simple questions comes. But the number of times clock problem is asked in net exam is very less. Uh, again, I am just saying that from some chapters, many of the exams, they ask very simple questions. But some chapters, for example, data interpretation, most of the questions are lengthy to read. There you have to understand which all questions you should strive from that chapter, which all questions you should skip from that chapter. Maybe they will give a very big data and very big table to comprehend. After that only you, have, you can solve the question. That kind of question you should decide whether it is a good question to attend or whether it is not a good question to attend. Again, chapter by chapter, all these chapters will be discussed. At that time, I will discuss elaborately about this. Now, the next step I want to tell is finding the catch in the question. In many questions, there will be a catch in the question. Once you identify the catch in the question, the question will be very simple. What is the meaning of catch in the question? There will be a word or a phrase that you have to take out from the question that will finish the question as soon as possible. I will show you an example. Look at this question. December 2017 net exam problem. This is all of you try this question. If you miss a catch in the question, sometimes it will take more time. Sometimes that will give you a wrong answer. Here you will get a wrong answer if you miss the catch in the question. I will explain elaborately. Here, what is the volume of the soil in an open pit of size? 2 meter into 2 meter into 10 centimeter. When you read the question, you may have seen that 2 meter is there, 2 meter is there, 10 centimeter is there. Centimeter you have to convert to meter. Then length is there, breadth is there, height is there. Volume of a cube is, sorry, cuboid is length into breadth into height. So you did 2 into 2 into 0 in 1 after converting. That is how you got 0 in 4. But that is wrong because that is not what the question is asking. Question is asking not the volume of the cuboid. Question is asking volume of the matter inside the cuboid. Where it is written? Volume of the soil inside the pit. How much soil is present inside the pit? That is what the question is asking. So the catch in the question is, it is an open pit, empty pit. And when it is mentioned open pit, it is clearly and making, making you understand that this is an empty pit. Otherwise, you will say it is a closed pit. You have to find the amount of soil. Volume of soil means amount of soil inside the empty pit. So how much deep is the pit, that doesn't matter at all. How much long is the pit, how much broad is the pit, that doesn't matter in this question. 2 meter, 2 meter, 10 centimeter is all diversions to take you out from the real point in the question. The real point in the question is the pit is empty and you don't want the volume of the pit. Yeah, if the question was volume of pit, I agree, the answer will be 0.4 meter cube. The question is asking volume of soil inside it. Volume of pit is 0.4 meter cube. Volume of soil is not 0.4 meter cube, 0 meter cube. So the catch in the question is, it is asking about soil and it is an open pit. These two things you have to understand. 
the irrelevant data i will tell about that some questions irrelevant data in this question also 2 meter 2 meter 10 centimeters is just an irrelevant data just to divert you from the real point so finding the catch in the question is very important the word or the phrase that gives you the solution at the earliest now the next one ignoring irrelevant data previous question itself was an example of ignoring irrelevant data some questions there will be irrelevant data previous question the dimension of the pit is an irrelevant data i will show you one more question for that look at this question this is a moving locomotive problem train problem we will discuss that chapter in detail it's a simple question all of you try so here a 100 meter long train crosses a 200 meter long and 20 meter wide bridge in 20 seconds so this is 100 meter long train 200 meter long and 20 meter wide bridge that means there is a bridge like this which is 200 meter long and it is 20 meter wide the irrelevant data is the 20 meter width because that width have nothing to do with the question width have nothing to do with the question because the train hub the train how to cross the bridge not the width of the bridge the length of the bridge crossing means after some time this train will move forward and become like this that is called crossing the total length of the train should cross the total length of the bridge total length should be crossed that is another point that we are going to learn in moving locomotive total length of the bridge also should be covered that is 200 meter also should be covered total length of the train itself should also be covered this is not crossing this is wrong crossing means the train should completely pass the bridge completely pass the bridge means 100 meter of itself should be covered that means what is the speed you know that speed is equal to distance by time the distance to be covered is 200 plus 100 distance of the bridge plus distance of the train divided by time time is 20 seconds so 20 divided by 20 and this 20 have nothing to do with the question that is just the width, width just to give you diversion again so 200 plus 100 300 by 20 300 by 20 means cancelling you will get 15 what meter per second but we want it in kilometer per hour now 15 meter per second question is asking in kilometer per hour yeah we will discuss all that in detail how to convert and all meter per second to kilometer per hour the factor you have to do is 18 by 5 conversion 3 into 18 54 kilometer per hour option c is the correct answer so in this question the idea is ignore the irrelevant data and the unit conversion should be clear if these two are clear the question is very simple a question so option c is the answer now the next thing choosing the right starting point choosing the right starting point that is very important some questions if you start at the right point you will get the answer very soon otherwise you may take too much time to finish the question also i will explain with an example look at this question this is a gate exam problem try it all of you so let me explain this question mohan the manager wants his four workers to work in pairs no pair should work for more than five hours that means maximum five hours only they can work together ram and john have worked together for five hours ram and john already work for five hours that means they cannot work anymore because question says more than five hours no one can work together so ram i am denoting by the first letter r john i am denoting by the first letter j so ram and john pair not possible this was a question which came in gate 2019 same type there was a question in CSCR net i will show that also after this question so Ram and John cannot be partnered because they both are not allowed to because they have already worked for 5 hours. No one can work for more than 5 hours. Krishna and Amir have worked as a team in 2 hours. Again, in the previous tip and trick I told you, avoiding irrelevant data. This is an irrelevant data with this question. This is just to make the question lengthy. Just to confuse you people. Because the problem many students have is they think that everything in the question should be used for the solution. No, it is not like that. Many of the things in the question is just dummy data. Dummy data just to confuse you. Just to confuse yourself that uh, I didn't use this data. So I may have done something wrong. No, if you didn't use the data, most of the time that is right. That is a data that you should not be used. Because this should, this have nothing to do with the question to decide who should be partners. Because they have worked for two hours. People can work for two hours or more than two hours. That is their wish. 
But the next data is a relevant data. Krishna does not want to work with Ram. Krishna and Ram cannot be partners means Ram and Krishna pair not possible. Ram and Krishna pair not possible. I am uh, writing in the order Ram's perspective itself so that we understand that Ram John not pair, Ram Krishna not pair. Now question is finally asking who is the partner of John, not the partner of uh, Krishna, not the partner of Ram, not the partner of um, Amir. Question is asking the partner of John. So normally if the question is asking partner of John, you will search for the partner of John. If you search for the partner of John, you will take more time to finish the question. You will get the correct answer. But the time factor, because about John only one information is given, Ram and John cannot be partnered. So you should start from the starting point which is more relevant or which is more easy to conclude. Here Ram is the correct starting point because about Ram more information is given. Ram, John cannot be partners. Ram, Krishna cannot be partners. Ram should be partnered with someone. Na? Ram should have a pair. So Ram should be partnered with the remaining person. There are only four people. Amir, Ram, John, Krishna. John, Krishna not pair of Ram means Amir should be partner of Ram because there is no other option for Ram. Everyone should get a partner. That is the idea. So, Ram's partner should be Amir. I think all of you understood this concept. If Ram's partner is Amir, definitely John's partner will be the remaining person. Who is the remaining person? Remaining person is Krishna. Ram, Amir paired. So, John should be paired with Krishna because there are only one person remaining. So, there is no other choice for John. John should take the remaining person. That is why the answer is option C. Krishna is the answer. So, this was another CSAR net problem of the same type. There was no difference, same type. Just the name are different. Professor Murthy likes to let her students choose who their partners will be. Previous question, it was manager Mohan. Here it is the Professor Murthy. And here there are four people. Alice, Bob, Calvin, Danny. Previous question, there was four people, Ram, John, Krishna, Amir. There are four people, Alice, Bob, Calvin, Danny. Alice, Bob, Calvin, Danny, the good thing about them is their first letters are A, B, C, D. So, it is easy to denote, easy to remember also. Here, same like previous question, no pair of students can work for more than seven class periods. Previous question, it was five hours. Here, it is seven class periods. Alice and Bob already work for seven hours. Alice and Bob already work for seven class periods. So, they cannot work more than that. Question says so. That is why Alice Bob partnership is not possible. Alice Bob cannot be partnered. Calvin and Danny have worked together for three class periods. That is again an irrelevant data like we discussed in previous question. Three class period they can continue working if they wish. Calvin does not want to work with Alice. Yeah, that is a relevant data you cannot avoid. Calvin does not want to work with Alice means he will not be forced to work with. That means Alice and Calvin cannot be partnered. So, the relevant data is Alice and Bob cannot be partnered, Alice and Calvin cannot be partnered. Alice and Bob, Alice and Calvin not partnered means Alice and Danny should be partnered. No? Because Alice should get a partner. A, B, C, D only four people are there. So, Alice and Danny partnered means Bob should be partnered with Calvin. So, the answer is the partner of Bob should be Calvin. Again, the starting point is very important because the question is about Bob. So, if you start with Bob, it will take more time. Because about Bob, more information is not given. So, now the next step I want to tell is, you have to be fast in arithmetic in some of the quantitative aptitude problem. Logical reasoning problems like previous two questions, you don't have any math to do. But there are some questions where you have to do some math. In those questions, being fast in arithmetic is very important. I will tell you how. Some people who are new to CSAR net exam, maybe have a doubt whether calculator is allowed or not. And the answer is no. As of now, calculator is not allowed. Calculator in CSAR net exam, it is not allowed. In gate exam, it is allowed. In CSAR net exam, even if CSAR have turned to an online pattern, even now, calculator is not allowed. In the future, they will allow or not? Don't know. But till the last exam, calculators were not allowed. So, in some of the questions, your arithmetic skill decides how fast you can do. So, for example, this question, December 2017 net exam problem. So, this is a very simple idea. Here it is 1758. 
This is a series formation problem, uh, number series with geometrical shape. We will discuss in detail in series formation chapter. But as an example, I am giving. 1715, the idea is the below two numbers, sorry, above two numbers have a connection with the below number. What is the connection? If this is x, this is y. This is x square minus y square square root of it. x square minus y square square root of it. Or we can say this number plus this number square is this number square. Pythagoras theorem application. This square, this square added, you will get this square. This square, this square added, this square. This square, this square added, you will get this square. This, if it is x, x square plus 40 square equal to 41 square. Both the perspectives you can say, either you can think from the below numbers perspective or you can think from the above numbers perspective. Anyway, the rule is Pythagoras theorem. These are called Pythagorean triplet. I told you some questions, your arithmetic skills matters. Here, if you don't know about Pythagorean triplet, you have to check it. 8 square 64, 15 square 225. Adding up, you will get 289. There, your arithmetic skills matters now. Even if it is not that difficult, if you know how to find squares fast. For example, 24 square, if you already know it is 576, it is easy. 49 plus 576 is 625, that is 25 square. If this is x, x square plus 40 square. 40 square if you know it is 1600. 41 square if you know 1681. We will discuss that in the upcoming classes, how to find squares using Mendel arithmetic or Vedic mathematics. 41 square, the easiest way to find it is number near to 50, this is the fastest way to calculate. 25 plus distance from 50, distance from 50 is minus 9, comma minus 9 the whole square. 25 plus minus 9 is 16, minus 9 the whole square is 81. I will write it as a formula for those new people. n square equal to 25 plus d, comma d the whole square, where d is equal to n minus 50, distance from 50. When the numbers are below 50, n minus 50 will be a negative number, that is why I am writing minus 9 square. So, even if you don't know 41 square, don't waste your time like this. Your normal multiplication is not what you should do. There, your Vedic maths or Mendel arithmetic skills will matter. I will explain about those things also in the upcoming classes. So, uh, some questions need your arithmetic skills. Many of the questions, not that much calculations are needed, but sometimes you need it. That things that you need, I will explain. Yeah, when I was telling about arithmetic skills, another thing is your basic formula understanding. Basic formula, especially in geometry, this is 4A. In geometry, your basic formula you should learn. I will say in many chapters you can avoid mathematics. Part A section or CSAR net general aptitude section is not mathematical, it is more logical. But in geometry and mensuration, there are some formulas you cannot avoid. So, if you have to completely avoid formula from part A, geometry and mensuration chapters should be skipped. And it is not a good idea to skip it completely. Because sometimes very simple questions comes if you know the basic formula. So, in my opinion, if possible, try to learn these formula. All the important formula flashcards will be there. So, sometimes there are some easy common sense questions. The next step is finding the easy common sense questions. Easy common sense question means this question, in yesterday's class I showed you this example. So, I am not explaining much about this. This was a general science question, but it is actually general science with common sense involved. Why common sense? When is school level general science or chemistry is involved, that you have to apply here. So, all of you try it, those of you haven't seen this question before. It is very simple, A n if you reverse you will get N a. N a is sodium. Sodium first letter is S. That is the right hand side. EF is ferrous or iron. Iron first letter is I. HG is, this is GH, reversed is HG. HG is mercury. Mercury first letter is M. That means first letter of the particular element which is obtained by reversing the left hand side of the given uh, set. That is what the question is asking. So, uh, N is reversed as SN. Sn is what? Tin. Tin first letter is T. So, option A, tin is the, T is the answer. I hope all of you understood it. One more tip I want to tell you is beware of very simple answers. Sometimes very simple answers will be there. You will get that answer, you will take that answer. After finishing the exam or uh, uh, when you see the answer key after the exam, then only you will, you will realize that the answer was wrong. 
the concept you use were wrong. I will give you a simple example for that. Look at this question. December 2017 net exam problem. All of you try this question. Equal masses of two liquids of density 6 and 4. So, density 1 is 6. Density 2 is 4. What is the density of the mixture? So, a common mistake some of you can make is total density or final density. You can think like density 1, density 2, average of it. 6 plus 4 by 2. 10 by 2, 5. And that answer will be definitely there in the answer option. Just to make you tick, tick that wrong answer. This is totally wrong. 5 is not the answer. Because you cannot add densities like that. You cannot add speeds like that also. Whenever it is rate of change, you cannot add it like that. That is actually simply because the weightage of the average is different. Only when the weightage is same, you can do m plus n by, sorry, a plus b by 2 or a1 plus a, a2 by 2. Here the weightage is different. Here the weightage denotes the volume. In a speed distance time problem also the same thing happens. When you are given average speed 1, physics students know better about this. Average speed 1, average speed 2, speed 1, speed 2. To find the average speed you cannot find S1 plus S2 by 2, that is wrong. Same mistake as you do here. It should be 2 S1, S2 divided by S1 plus S2. How that formula came? Because total speed will be total distance by total time. It is not speed 1 plus speed 2 by 2. Same way total density will be total mass by total volume because density is mass by volume. There are many cases, not only density and speed, many cases with these kinds of formula, these issues comes. I will take each of it. So, either you can use the formula 2 d1 d2 by d1 plus d2 just like 2 s1 s2 by s1 plus s2. Otherwise, try to understand what is happening. Don't depend upon blind formulas without understanding the concept. Formulas you can use. I am not saying that you should com completely avoid formula. Some cases formulas are good. For a clock problem, formula is very good. But understand how that formula came. Here, density of the mixture means final density D you want to find. That will be total mass divided by total volume. Because mass by volume is density, na? Total mass is how much? We know that the masses are equal. That is why we can say m and m. m is the mass of first object, m is the mass of second object. Or small m, small m. m plus m divided by total volume. Volume is equal to mass by density. Na? Mass by density. Density is mass by volume means volume is equal to mass by density. So, total volume will be mass by density. Mass is what? m by density. Density is given. First density is 6. So, m by 6 plus second volume. Total volume means volume 1 by volume 1 plus volume 2. That is second volume B will be m by 6 plus m by 4. So, this you have to simplify. If you simplify this, you will get 2m divided by 10m by 24. 10m by 24, mm cancels. 24 goes to the top. 48 by 10, 4.8 you will get. That is what you are going to get 2 d1 d2 divided by d1 plus d2 also where d1 and d2 are density. 2 into 6 into 4 divided by 6 plus 4. But the problem with by hurting that formula is that formula will work only if masses are same. If masses are different that will not work. In the next exam they give that first mass is this, second mass is this. You cannot use this formula. Then you have to go for the basic mass by volume. Most of you know this I think. I think. If you don't know this, keep it in your mind. This is again a general science problem which is just checking your basics about this. 